So yeah, I was saying that uh, as many of us who study Mr. Phil's work, the Chris Harry Cole book, um, that many of us have some type of knowledge on how the system of race and white supremacy operates by the use of uh, violence and deception, which uh, deception is another form of violence. Um, we also understand that this deception is used to the uh, is used to the use of words and words or terms like America, Africa, Asia, by like phrases like the government is racist, anyone can be a racist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also, I've heard Mr. Fuller say uh, that quote unquote the clue, the glue that holds the system of race and white supremacy together is words. And as I'm saying, that as is through through words, racist white supremacists have done a massive uh, a masterful uh, job on us uh, as far as far as confusing us on what the system of racism white supremacy is and how it works because of those words. And uh, as far as logic is concerned, the best way or the way to counter deception is with truth. And counter racist language is designed to do just that, to use words, terms, and phrases to reveal truth. Revealing truth is the key to countering the system of race and white supremacy. And the more of us that use counter racism language, the more the system of white supremacy will be eroded. And so <clears throat> before I uh, begin, uh, do you have any anybody have any words on what I said? Um, any ideas? Any thoughts? If uh. If nobody have any to say right right now, I will, if possible, um, I asked Mr. Fuller today that question, and I wanted to play his response to my um to my question. Uh, just let me know if anyone can hear me or can't hear me because I see everybody's mic is still muted. Yeah, I can okay, hear you, Joe. Good. Thank you, thank you. I can hear you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna play uh, what Mr. Fuller's response to my question was. If y'all can hear it, let me know. If you can't, let me know. Uh, one second. Uh, oh, also I'm gonna add a little addition to that because he it's kind of long, so bear with me. But it's another part where somebody had had a question today. After Mr. Fuller gave his explanation to me later on, somebody gave another question. I just want you to think, you know, what your 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 thoughts, even though he is a victim, so VGQ and all that. But I just want you to hear the whole back and forth. Well, not really a back and forth, but what the person said versus what Mr. Fuller was saying. Um, his response to what the person was saying. So here you go. So, what you got going, Joe? Hey, good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Um, so my question today is, uh, why is using counter racist language important to countering racism and white supremacy? Why is what? Say that again. Why is using, why is using counter racist, counter racism language important to countering racism? Because white using counter racist language is important. Countering racism. And since you brought this subject up, it was something that I was intended to do in the opening, but I had to read that letter. America, I'm going to get back to that again, because this is in the textbook. I keep telling people, and I don't know why people keep doing it, because I keep asking people, not just telling people, neither of well, don't know that much. But I just tell people stuff. I ask questions. I want to know 
what exactly is an American? And also, while we have it, what is an African? And what is an Asian? And when do you know the difference? The Asians breathe air? Well, the answer is yes. Okay, does that qualify you to specifically be an Asian, but you're not nothing else? See, these words, and then when you get to the word America, it's all over the place. And it seems like everybody keeps missing that. I mean, people with all kinds of degrees will say that America's mistreated black people since its very beginning. And I keep asking a simple question. What is an American? What exactly is an American? Please, will somebody tell Neely Fuller before he dies, which is just around the corner. I'm at the age now. Somebody needs to tell me exactly what an American is and exactly what an Asian is and exactly what an African is. And I mean with absolute precision. Because I got so lost after decades of trying to find out. I finally gave a definition that I, that I can work with. I say an African, an American, and an Asian. These are words. An African, an American, and an Asian are people who practice justice. That's the only definition that makes sense. None of the other definitions make sense. Asian, African, American, they don't make sense unless you center it around one word, justice. People who practice justice. That's it. And if you don't practice justice, you are not an American. It's impossible to be an American if you don't practice justice. Asian or African, you can't be any one of those three things according to what? Neely Fuller? No, according to logic. You can go through all encyclopedias and look up the words like I have done a few times. Dictionaries all over the place. I looked it up. None of it makes sense except people who practice justice. Otherwise, there's just some words. Americans did this. Americans did that. What is an American? African did this. I got African blood. What is that? What is that? What exactly is African blood? You look at maps and whatnot. Who makes the maps? Maps all over the place. Depends on who makes it. And the map says this, and the map says that. You track it down, you find out some white supremacist made the map in order to make what? White supremacists stronger. So she finds some places when you really go there and look at the place, they are bigger than what was on the map compared to something else that was on the map. So look at things in depth. But center right here on this day in 2023, this center, if you just want to deal with words, and the, I got the word guy here on my desk, where I say what an African is, what an American is, and what an Asian is. And right now in 2023, according to logic, not one of those three things exists. Because you can't have Africans, Americans, or Asians in the system of white supremacy. That's impossible. Because what is an African, what is an American, 
whether they're an Asian, they're people. That's first of all, they're not eagles or swans or blue mountains. They are people. That's number one. People who do what? Practice justice. And nobody can practice justice in the system of white supremacy. They do not allow it. All right. Okay. Uh, before I put the other one on, um, any uh, comments or uh, thoughts? No, sir. CR, any comments, thoughts? Oh, uh, no, sir. I mean, he, he laid it out, you know. No comments from me. Okay. Uh, so I want to put this other one on um, for a victim asking a question. And I want you to, if you, if, you, if you have any thoughts, you know, say what you say. But I do kind of want to hear what you think about what, he, what Mr. Fuller response to this. Um, one second. I'm trying to get to the right point. Here we go. Uh, let's go to Joshua. At least that, will, that is what we call in the Northwestern Hemisphere. Joshua, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Oh, no, Ruth, I'm sorry. What is your question, Joshua? Excuse me. Yeah, I was um, listening to a podcast, and there was a person, a non-white person on there from the place they call North Korea. And she was explaining some of the things over there. And one of the things that she said that I found interesting was once she found what they call freedom, um, she would be thinking for maybe five or ten minutes, and then she would get physically tired and have to lay down and go to sleep. And it's very, very hard to think for yourself. But I wanted, I wanted to ask Mr. Fuller, um, those people, he says there's only non-white, white, and racist white people. And those people from the place that they call North Korea obviously do have melanin in their skin or color in their skin, but they do not look like us at all. And from what I understand, they absolutely positively hate the United States and um, are prepared to destroy us at any point in time. So us as Americans or where we're at place, place in the world, are we being, um, by trying to solve racism, are we being, uh, I don't even know how to put it, because from what she explained was their lives are very hard, but they have no freedom. So what do we have here? Because you say that we're in a prison system right now, but it seems like a pretty good prison system compared to where she's from, if that makes any sense. I don't want to be a they're, they're in North Korea eating bugs, eating rats. Uh, they don't have grocery stores. They don't have, uh, the government is not, uh, does not have to provide them with food. They are murdered at a, a much higher rate. If you commit a crime in North Korea, they can jail up to eight generations of your family. So, isn't that true slavery? What is the question? Isn't that true slavery? Is, is what, is what, what about slavery? You say that we're enslaved in uh, yes. America. In yeah, okay. No, no, no. I, I didn't say anything about enslaved in America. I don't, no, no, no. Well, I don't even know how to handle some of the questions. <laughs> That are put to me because the word it's a foreign language to me now, and that I guess that's my fault. I think I know what you're saying, but the words that are being used are the words that I'm saying uh, shouldn't even be in the picture. The words mean something. When when you say Americans did this, you've lost me right there. 
consommateur quand je donne un verre. I keep saying that. Not in counter racist science. It's impossible for an American to exist, or an African, or an Asian. It's absolutely impossible. You're talking about ideas that have never come to fruition. Being an American has never happened. It's something that everybody should want to be. Because Americans practice justice. That's why we're trying to get justice. How can you have justice and say that you're trying to get justice when you already have it? Americans practice justice, period. Africans practice justice, period. And Asians practice justice, period. I've said that throughout this program and other programs. I keep saying that almost every week. Everyone's right past everybody. It, 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 it's, man, it goes to show you, have we given any thought to what we're saying? And you have professors who are doing that. Well, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they clear their throats and, and they're wearing African garb. And then they start talking about Americans did this and Americans did that. And uh, great African empires. Well, stop and think of what you're saying when you say that. African empire, is that justice? Is that justice? Is that civilization? And with a straight face. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do we understand anything about white supremacy at all? Anything? And the answer is, most of us, the answer to that question is no. Right in the middle of it and understand none of it. Looking right at it and seeing nothing. And that's what I'm going to pause it there. Um, uh, any thoughts on that? Um, before I, before anybody answer, if anybody is going to answer, um, if I was going to use, if I was going to ask that question, which, um, using kind of racism language, um, I think the question should have been more of, VGQ to him. Unfortunately, he's still learning. Uh, the person, Joshua. Uh, it's not my son, by the way, because my son's name is Joshua, so that wasn't my son. But, uh, um, I would have said or asked or the uh, non-white people when so-called North Korea who's mistreating you know, other non-white people there, <clears throat> would their situation be um, worse than the mistreatment that we're suffering over here in what they call uh, the Northwestern Hemisphere? Maybe something like that. It, it probably would have, he probably would have understood the question a little better, maybe. <clears throat> um, but as far as I understand the whole reality of it, um, non-white people mistreat non-white people in the prison system. I, unfortunately, I've been in greater confinement, so I know what that's like. Um, so in a prison, that's what the prisons do. Prisons go at each other. They don't go at the, the uh, the prison guards. They go at the, each other, each other. And so, that's to be expected in a system of racism, white supremacy, that non-white people, no matter where they at on the planet, is going to go at each other. You know, the white supremacists uh, say they uh, have some governance over their so-called people, and they can do uh, whatever they want, and so they doing what they do, and 
they're allowed to do it by the white supremacists. Because of course, the harm, uh, non-white people harming other non-white people is, is it's what the system is is is, is uh, all about. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you. You want to speak? I'm, I'm not sure who went first. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna uh, start with thank you. Well, uh, smoking damages went first. Okay, he, so he smoking raised damages. First. You go first, please. I don't mind if you want to go first, Dr. Sinky, if uh, greens, by the way. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be really brief. There, uh, As far as I understand, there are some prisons that are more comfortable than others, but they're still prisons. Uh, that's as, as far as I understand it. There are some prisons that are more comfortable than others, but they're still prisons. I don't think there's anything else I can say about that. There's, there, it's either a prison or it isn't. Um, and also, I wanted to say just quickly that the whole notion that there was justice on this planet, and then we ran into, you know, for non-white people, and then we ran into the white supremacists, and then all of a sudden there was non-justice on this planet, is another thing that uh, Neely Fuller Jr. has talked about umpteen times down through the years on his broadcast, which I agree with as well. You see, that's another thing. We've, we've been victim to the white, subject to the white supremacist system for so long that we just think that the white supremacists are the ones that invented injustice. I don't think that's true. Um, as far as I understand, the white supremacists are the biggest obstacle to producing justice on this planet right now. I think they're the biggest obstacles in the way of it because they're the most powerful people on the planet and could produce it if they wanted to. Um, but, you know, it's everyone's responsibility to produce justice on this planet, I think. Uh, but, yeah, we, we shouldn't really be fooled into thinking that that they're the only people that practice injustice and ju and injustice was, I don't know, created by the white supremacists. Uh, that's all I wanted to say for now. A hundred percent agree. Definitely. Uh, there, you know, at least from the records that I've seen, uh, historical records, injustice has always been here. Um, the white supremacists didn't uh, create, uh, start that rather. It's been here for centuries, way before they even started, even probably even thought about racism and white supremacy. So, yeah. Uh, Dr. Sin? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say, I, uh, to answer your question, I, I, I couldn't see any way for me to phrase that question, I wouldn't have even asked Mr. Fuller that question, you know, after reading the code. I, I don't, and, and I, I say that based on um, a lot of the questions in the code that, that uh, you know, talk about, you know, what is a race of people, you know, all, all of the questions that are regarding uh, a race of people um, when, when one tries to answer those questions, I, I, well, I, I'm just going to speak for myself. When I attempted to answer those questions, I, I learned a lot um, as far as like, you know, the, the individual used the term, uh, he said North Koreans, right? I understand that North Koreans don't really exist, right? The, the, uh, the part of the code that I agree with is that <clears throat> the only people on this planet are white people non-white people and racist white supremacists that's like the bottom line everything else is just like trash on top of the truth you know um and i i, I think that uh in, in anyone who who just starts asking a lot of questions about uh what a race of people is what a nationality is or what have you they can get right down to the bottom line that you know, it is the truth. There's only white people, non-white people, and racist white supremacists. And, and, and that's it. Thank you. Well, getting back to uh, the topic, why is kind of racism, racism language important to kind of racism? I think uh, what Mr. Fuller said um, is a perfect example. Um, 
Oh, CR, I'm sorry. Please, you can you can start. But yeah, it's definitely a per, per, uh, perfect example. CR, you can start. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I don't know why I'm having... Okay. Hopefully the hand will go down. Um... Yeah, that, that brother talked for a long time and didn't really a ask a question. Uh, I used to do that. I used to do that a lot. And some people at the Wells and Institute used to get on me all the time about that. They said, just write your questions down, just write them down, and then ball them all down into one one question. I said, well, you know, I can't, uh, I don't know if I'm going to lay it out logically just asking one question. But once I started to do that and, and do it repeatedly, then I kind of got it, got the hang of it. You know, a lot of people haven't gotten the hang of that. And so they're trying to work through the logic, it seems like to me, with with all that they're saying. But they really want to find out the answer to one thing. And I base that a lot on what I used to do. So I'm listening to this guy ask Mr. Fuller this question. And all the while, I'm trying to figure out what is he trying to find out? What is he trying to find out? And I never could figure it out. He's trying to find the answer to something, but I never could figure out what it was he was trying to find the answer to. Now, Mr. Fuller will see he he practices a karate chop method of counter racism. And I do a little bit of that myself. So Mr. Fuller say, Hey, hey, you're speaking a foreign language. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and and when you get into counter racism language, I mean really get into it and that's all you're doing is using it. The stuff that black people talk about on a day to day basis, it will start to sound like a foreign language. You know, you you you'll probably spend a lot of time trying to explain to them why it is a foreign language. And after you get tired of doing that, you'll say, you know what? I'm not even going to explain to them no more. You know? But what I try to do instead of reaching that point is to try to strike a balance so that I don't reach that point so that I, I'm able to understand what people are talking about and hold a conversation with them while at the same time introducing counter-racism language into the conversation. See, there, there are times where, and Josh Wicked used to say this a lot, Back in the day, he used to say, well, you have to give it to them at a pace where they can accept it. You know, he he used to stay on me hard. <laughs> you know, I thought for a while that, you know, he had something against me. Uh, and I found out we were both born in the same city. You know, not that far apart from each other, Jeep. Ge uh, geographically and went to you know his house and you know visited with his parents and whatnot and just you know relax I had really good conversations <clears throat> but striking that balance you know so that you don't reach the point where you're saying hey look you're speaking a foreign language to me <laughs> you know Stop using the word American. Stop using it. And if if you do that, you know, you won't be given 
the person counter racism at a in a way that they're able to accept it because then you'll be speaking a foreign language to them so you got to keep that in mind um you know when you're talking to people who don't know anything about counter racism language or they might know a little bit about it you know you got to keep that in mind that that listening thing you really got to pay attention you know you got to try to hear what the person is saying you got to try to understand what it is that they are trying to understand and then you'll be able to introduce counter racism language to them in a way that they can accept it. Smoke and damages. You up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you kind of went, jumped the, uh, uh, kind of went before I, uh, I definitely want to get into, uh, like, um, some practices or suggestions on how best to use kind of racism language. And, uh, that's definitely, um, a topic or a question that, uh, I want us, if we can, I wish more people can jump and let, uh, speak. I want to hear some different, uh, perspectives, but, um, mm-hmm. I also wanted before you, before you speak, uh, SD, um, I, I do want to get into, uh, before I get into suggestions on how best to use kind of racial language, I want to go into the best way, uh, certain words, uh, certain phrases that maybe, you know, we could try to, uh, ourselves, myself or others, or try to suggest to others, uh, how to certain words that we shouldn't be using or try to avoid using that, that helps support the system of race and white supremacy. But, uh, before I do that, SD, uh, you get ahead, you can speak. Yeah, I'd just like to say everything that CR said is exactly what I was going to say. No, <laughs> no but CR, you did say more or less exactly what I wanted to say, though. I mean, sometimes when someone asks me a question, I do like to ask, what is the motivation behind the question, please? Right. Sometimes that's all right to do that. Right. We, we've, we've been programmed to think and say that it's rude to ask to, to answer a question with a question. But who told us that? The white supremacists? You know, sometimes the, the, the motivation behind someone's question is as important as the question that they're asking you. And when you find out, like CR just said, when you find out the context behind why they're asking you the question, then, I mean, even if the person has nefarious reasons for asking you a question, you can find that out by just asking them what they mean by the question. What's the context behind it? Why are they asking the question? What is it exactly that you, they, that they want to find out? So, yeah. And also, I just I needed to mention as well because I, I heard that that part, uh, and I've I've just heard lots and lots of different obviously non-white people ringing into Needy Fuller Junior's broadcast down through the years and. Uh, and so, and obviously the white supremacists confuse us, right? And part of the white supremacist plan is to confuse black people about what racism is, then get you or get us to focus on and ridicule the black person that the white supremacists have confused, right? You know, the white supremacists hate when black people keep the focus on them as the problem makers. So, you know, it, I, I always try and get other non-white people to keep that in keep that in mind we're all at different stages of learning about what racism white supremacy is that you know we're all in this room are confused victims of racism white supremacy various stages of confusion so that's one thing i've definitely learned down down through the years so the person um who asked nearly fuller junior the question that we just heard may have been confused um but it's important that we understand that the people who have confused him are the usual suspects the the, the white supremacists themselves yes 
Talk to soon. Uh, yeah, something that both CR and uh, Smoking Damages uh, were saying made me think about uh, something that I remember learning from. I think I learned it from. I know I, I know I got it from a t- an attempt to counter racist. I, I think it was from um, CR's website, but it was it was something that was called uh, compensatory conversation control, right? And um, I remember it was like if 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 I'm having a discussion with someone, and if if they if they ask me a question that I don't understand, I let them know. I say, you, you know, hey, I don't quite understand your question. I need to ask you a question to better understand what it is that you're tr- that, that you're saying. I think I think I got that from that. I can't remember, but I know that usually when I'm having conversations with people, like somebody like you know, because of the the uh, brain trashing that the racist white supremacists do twenty four seven, you know, every every you know every anybody that's classified as black is supposed uh, is somehow supposed to be an African American or whatever. Like someone, I was having a conversation with someone today, and they were telling me um, that I was an African American, and because I'm African American, I'm one hundred percent African and all this gibberish and um you know i did i did i mean i immediately just had to ask them if they were a white person that's that's the seems like the other thing but i'm 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 getting off of my point I basically i'm just saying that i think that if if someone uh you know asks you a question and and you don't you know you want to you don't want to appear rude uh it's just you know a courteous way of just saying hey look to better understand the question that you're asking, I need to ask you a question. And um, don't don't respond to uh, to statements when you know somebody makes a statement. Don't respond to the statement unless you unless you unless you have a question. And if you have any statements, try to form your statement into a question. I, I, if I remember correctly, that that's how compensatory conversation control works. And I'm off. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, uh, so before I go deeper into that, uh, what you just discussed, um, I know some of the words, there are a lot of words and phrases that we use that uh, support the system of racism. But uh, the big one that's flying around amongst us which I'm seeing everywhere, I mean, uh, CR kind of discussed it before, is uh, anti-black racism. And that word right there, uh, it, what, it, what I've seen as, as how it's been used in that context is basically pitting the uh, victims against each other. Because I've seen it used in a way where I've heard other victims are practicing anti-black racism. And that right there is, it doesn't even, to me, it doesn't even make logical sense. I, I, I can't even understand it, really. Um, but uh, that is definitely a term that is uh, being thrown around a lot lately. And uh, I haven't really figured out how, if you no, know, at least if I'm talking to someone directly, how I would be able to like discuss in a way or talk to them in a way where we can try. If I'm talking to another victim, particularly, and they use the term saying that someone, uh, I guess I can ask a question, as you just said, uh, uh, Dr. Sin, have a. Uh, I can't, I'm sorry about the phrase. I can't remember the phrase you used. But uh, to use counter racist language uh, or science to be able to 
try to um, not stop them necessarily from using the term, but try to direct them to the words of truth. I guess I could say it like that. Uh, because that's what kind of racist language is about, trying to direct, try to you know, reveal truth. And so that's just one term. Um, and as CR has also mentioned before, and I've seen it, that you know, suspected racists are now using the term anti-white. <laughs> and I haven't seen them use the word racism with it, but definitely anti-white is a big one. Um, I'm sure they some of them probably using racism with the word too, because you know, as they promote that anybody could be a racist. Um, so yeah, see y'all. Oh yes, sir. Uh, yeah, they they use anti-white racism. Um, more and more of them are going to start using that. You know, uh, that term anti-black racism. That's just that's a poor that's a poor phrase. You know. We really should, you know, try not to use that at all costs. But, you know, black people, like you said, uh, Joe, black people use that against each other. Now, I said when people start using that term, that that's the purpose of it. Anti-black racism, that's the purpose of that term is that black people are going to start using it against each other. Then white people are going to start saying anti-white racism, saying that black people are practicing anti-white racism against them. Uh, in short, it's always going to be the black person's fault. <laughs> you know, that's where that language is going toward. You know, um, with that, uh, I'm a Get off the mic. I see some more hands up. Uh, man, I think that is. What is it? Yeah, Martin. I'm sorry, Martin. Okay. Thank you. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you for the space. Um, thank you for all the other participants. Um, conversation is definitely interesting um, and is very important. Uh, for attempting to produce a system of justice um, using proper language because we are in a system of racism, white supremacy. Um, and that definitely includes the language and the power of words and how they are used. I just wanted to uh, just make a quick um, add on to um, what was being said. Um, just the, um, the idea of that um, America, Africa, like all the terms that are given um, are terms that are are terms that assist the system of racism and white supremacy. Um, so I have to look at that with everything that is being said. Um, but in in particular, um, I saw um, CR, you had made a post um, the other day about anti-black, you know, and, you know, like I told you all. And I read it, you know, I, I thought about it because I've heard it before, but just you all talking about it right now and anti-black racism. Um, hearing it that way and really thinking about it, um, I have to suspect that these terms are made by people who practice racism and are classified as white because... I related the same as unconscious bias. Anti-black racism is a oxymoron. So I just want to uh, just um, that's my observation on it. And it goes back to the importance of using counter racist language because you have to be talking in accurate terms about what is happening. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Martin. Appreciate you. Uh, Dr. Sid? Yeah, I, I just I wanted to say that, uh, yeah, it reminded me when, when I heard the term uh, just used uh, anti-white racism, I remember about 20 years ago when uh, ra a lot of racist suspects were on social me media, uh, they were using that term, but 
uh, they were using another one that was supposed to mean the same thing. They call, they kept calling it reverse racism. And, um, you know, when you pay real close attention to how they operate, they, they feed us a lot of the words, a lot, a lot of the words, um, regarding racism, they feed us those words. Like, you know, they gave us the word segregation. They gave us integration. They gave us gentrification. They gave us, uh, uh, you know, we, we're looking at anti-black racism. Now, when you, when you think about the term, the, those three words put together, that makes it seem as if there's other racisms, right? That there's, there's, because there's a, when it just says black racism, then that, that alone already says, that already takes the mind of the individual who receives it, who doesn't really question it, that already takes them to the belief that it's like, uh, like a diversion that says that, you know, there is no racism, white supremacy. There's, you know, racism is all these other general things that they add to it. It's discrimination. It's hate. It's, you know, it's subconscious. It's, you know, all these other diversions that they apply to it. But I wanted to make a suggestion that I, I think that, um, as as these as these terms come about, we should you know like like we're discussing it now, um, maybe practice scenarios with one another, um, you know, to to help each other uh, get better at compensatory conversation control um, when whenever we you know whenever we're dealing with people because because of course it is it it this is the the only way that appears to be uh, the most constructive way to counter white supremacy is, is you know, by using these words. So, yeah, that's it. See you. Huh? Yeah, one thing about the term anti-black racism that a lot of black people don't get is that the word white ain't in it. See, that's the first thing that struck me as odd about it. I say, oh, oh yeah, that's a term for black people to use against each other right there. Because you're taking the word white out of it altogether. The only people who have the ability to practice racism. You're just removing that altogether. So it's not supposed to be a term that describes what they are doing, what white people are doing. See, and, and when, when things like that come up, we ought to look at it right off the bat, you know, make a quick analysis. Uh, if necessary, run some counter racism science experience experiments. Um, but once you are into you know, counter racism language. Um, and once you have run, you know, lots of counter racism science experiments, you, you won't have to run a whole lot more. I mean, you should still do it. I still do it, you know. Uh, you should still do it if you need to. Um, but something's just going to jump right out at you. It's, yeah, that's. That's odd right there. Yeah, that's odd right there. So I remember when they used to use that term reverse racism, Dr. CNQ. Reverse racism. I said, well, what is racism going forward? What do you mean by reverse? What, what is it going forward? You know, and no one would ever answer that question. See, some, some things is, uh, it, I read, I read a study many years ago about language and how it causes you to think differently. Um, people that speak one language don't see things the same way as people who speak a different language. 
Uh, and there are many studies about that. I mean, you can Google it. Counter-racism language has the same effect. And all of a sudden, those long questions that are not really questions like Joshua was, at, was asking, <laughs> you know, um, you won't even need to ask them if you're using counter-racism language. I wouldn't even attempt to ask that question. Not only to not not only to Mr. Fuller, but anybody, you know, because there's no way to do it using counter racism language. Uh, one thing about words is you use words to think with, and a lot of people I don't think really realize that thinking is the process of giving verbal form to what's already known. So when you're thinking, you're using words to think with. There's no way to think without the use of words. You know, and counter-racism language is going to force you to think differently, just like any other language would. It's going to force you to think differently. You know, so... Um, and you have to be careful even when using counter-racism language because the sequence of words is important as well. So with that, I'm off the mic. Oh, at, uh, Twitter speak is I land my plane, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, Yes, SD. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to speak to uh, any black person who uses the term anti-black racism yet. Um, now, I don't think that is an accurate term. <clears throat> and I agree with what's been said so far. Um, I think system of racism, white supremacy is by far the most accurate term I've heard yet. Um, but when I think of why the term is being used by black people, I th I've got a good idea of why white supremacists may enjoy and promote the use of it among black people. But when I think of the motivation behind why some black people are using the term anti-black racism, if I try to surmise, like, or think aloud, like uh, Dr. Sinkyu was suggesting just a moment ago, like, if we, I mean, I think I was talking to Dr. Sinkyu about this a uh, while ago, like how we need to make this into more of a think tank and promote more of a kind of think tank among ourselves. And if we could, if I could just do this for a second. So maybe it could be that the black people, some of the black people that are saying that phrase, using that phrase, anti-black racism, it could be that they are trying to explain that black people are the most mistreated under this system of racism, white supremacy. And now, like I said, the phrase may not be the most accurate, but then that might be the reason why it's being said. And I mean, for example, we're the only people on the planet that don't like our own hair, that are being conditioned to not like our own hair. Um, as far as, I mean, to the extent that we do, I'm sure other victims, some other victims of racism don't, may not like their own hair too. And I heard uh, quite a while back that the most popular surgery in the, the place commonly recognized as China on the planet, that for a time, the number one surgery was eyelid surgery. Apparently they wanted to look a bit more European, not looking a bit more black, but look a bit more European with the eyelid surgery. So I understand that a lot of that is true, right? So a lot of us have been mistreated in different ways. But you know, like Doctor, what you know, like Doctor Welsing used to say before about black get back. Uh, you know that that black people just an acknowledgement that black people are the most mistreated. When I think of um, when I think of justice, the definition of justice, if if justice is guaranteeing that no one is mistreated and guaranteeing that those who need help the most are given the most constructive help 
it may be constructive to identify who is being mis who is being the most mistreated on the planet so right in terms of and if it is black people and we do need more help because our treatment under this system of racism and white supremacy has been more savage and more severe than other people who are non-white on this planet it may be constructive to discern that it may be constructive to realize that because we may be uh, in need of the most constructive help because we are the most mistreated. So I, I think I do understand the need for the phrase. I think I do understand the need of why some black people are using the phrase. I don't think it's an accurate phrase, anti-black racism, because I think it's open to so much abuse as what's just been said, which I agree with um, what Dr. Sinq uh, and uh, CR and and you, Martin, and Joe was just saying as well. But when I think of the of why some black people might say it, I do I do think that's probably what they might be getting at, even though I don't agree with the the uh, the phrase. Uh, Doctor, thank you, uh, Steve. Doctor, thank you. You was next, then CR, and then uh, Martin. Yeah, you know, I was thinking I was thinking along those same lines. But then it occurred to me that it could also, I mean, the confusion around the term anti-black racism, if because if if a lot of if if the white supremacists want victims of white supremacy, um, I'd say more confused victims of white supremacy to remain confused, it could also mean being against black people who practice racism. It could also it could also you know be used in in that way. So you're saying I'm against black people who practice racism or I'm against uh or you know like what you said it, it, it could be you know that uh because we are the mistreat most mistreated that um they're trying to find a way to uh you know express uh that way of being the most mistreated. And that would probably require us then some, you know, some attempted counter racist to come up with a, uh, a better term that we could spread. You know, yes. Dr. Around so, sorry, sorry, Dr. That. Thank you. That's exactly, you've just said it in, in even a better way than I just did. That's exactly what I was getting at. Maybe we need to help them to come up with a better phrase to describe what they're talking about when they say anti-black racism. Thanks for that, Dr. Sinki. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, okay, uh, CR? You know? Yeah, uh, thank more. you, sir. Yeah, so in order to do that, you're going to have to, you know, do what we talked about earlier. You know, um, experiment, huh? <laughs> well, well, you're gonna have to be able to talk to somebody and tr by trying to listen to them, trying to hear what they're trying to say, uh, in order to understand what it is that they're trying to say, right? And at the same time introduce kind of racism language into the conversation so that they can see that that term is not precise. You know, and, and this is not an easy task, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not. As, as for who needs help the most, I, most, I, I remember I was, uh, you know, talking to my daughter about that. Uh, she was very young <clears throat> at the time. And uh, and she asked me, she said, well, how am I supposed to know who needs help the most? <laughs> you know? And I said, okay. Um, so I gave her the example of, you know, victims of a car accident, right? You guys ever heard anybody else give that example? Yeah, Fuller mm -hmm. gave that example a lot. Oh, he did? Yeah, oh. he gave that example a lot. Of, uh, ambulance, uh, ambulance going like you on the highway and uh, 
you see the ambulance coming down, you trying to get to work, you know, you move out the way of the ambulance for a reason. Because whoever's in the ambulance or whoever they're going, obviously they need help the most. More than you. You you need help, but not like they need help. So. Oh, okay. Now, I never heard him give that one. But uh, the way I put it is just a little bit different. So you got you got a car accident, right? And there's three victims at a car accident, right? You arrive on the scene, there's three victims at a car accident. Or you could say four or five, however many you want to, uh, you know, give an example for. But I try to keep it short, right? Say you observe one person and they walking around that the one person that's in a, a victim of a car accident, they walking around, look like they dizzy, they holding their head, you know, and another person is laying on the ground and it looks like their leg is in an awkward position. Maybe it's broken or something, but you ain't never seen nobody's leg bent like that before, <laughs> you know? And the third person is in the car and the car is about to catch on fire. Which one of these help the most? And it'll take a one second to say, well, the person in the car needs help the most. And say, there you go. You can figure it out. You can figure out who needs help the most. And you don't have to ask anybody who needs help the most. Just by observing. You know, just take a look at the scene, make an assessment, a quick assessment, quick as you possibly can. And you can figure out who needs help the most. I'm off the mic. He, he also gave something similar to that as well. <clears throat> uh, really? Yeah, he gave something similar to that. Like if huh. somebody's... Uh, it's a similar scenario. I can't remember exactly, but something similar. But yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Martin, you're next. Yeah, I kind of wanted to um, elaborate on uh, what Smoking Damages and Dr. St. Q was saying as well with um, how anti-blackness is the term anti-black racism is being used um, and the importance of counter-racist logic and creating new terms that are more accurate to describe what victims are trying to um, explain what's happening. Um, I've seen it used to explain other black people that they see as being able to practice racism. So instead of saying, you know, it's racism, white supremacy, they'll say that, oh, it's anti-black racism, as in a black person, quote unquote, practicing racism on another black person. And I've seen this used as a, I guess they would call it a codified political term for when other people call other people coons and such language like that. Um, so I've seen it used in that way as well. So I think that that just <clears throat> means that... Um, Proper language must be, you know, experimented and then seeing what works and then trying to spread it because it's all it's doing is just helping the confusion because um, I just see it to promote the idea that blacks can't practice racism and it promotes the idea that victims are the problem of this situation. And I'll stop there. Well, thank you. Uh just before you go, SD, I just want to mention, uh, SD, uh, gave a good, uh, space talking about from the white, white supremacist, uh, suspects perspective, uh, or maybe not their perspective, but them, I would say practicing racism using terms like white fragility, uh, uh, white, what's the other one? Um, uh, not, not ignorance, but, uh, I'm, 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 uh, and I can't get it, but, uh, he'll, he'll explain it hopefully. But he used some, the, some of the terms that they use, uh, that also I see a lot of non-white people use as well. Um, you know, white privilege. That's the other one. Um, and unconscious bias. Yeah. Those are the three. And, uh, you know, those are also terms that definitely help support the system of racism. Um, that uh, it's you know, as as Cr and Doctor Sin said, you know, we should try our best to uh, 
and which is a not an easy route, you know, when you're talking with a victim, trying to, you know, help them use kind of racism language. But uh, I think it is something that we should, you know, attempt to try to help them with. So that way we can, uh, you know, get closer and closer to uh, eroding the system. So, yeah, SD. Thanks for that, Joe. Um, the Yeah, I was just, just uh, further to what we all just said about um, the term anti-black racism. Like, like I say, I don't think the phrase is an accurate term to describe what I think they're trying to express. But if, if one thing I've definitely learned down through the years is that, you know, the, the term may be inaccurate. It might even be a dangerous term, um, open to abuse and misuse by the white supremacists. But if there's something that a victim of racism wants to say to express what they think racism, white supremacy is, if they're observing something, uh, uh, they're observing a phenomenon, an aspect of racism, white supremacy as it relates to them, they're going to say it. They're going to say it. And even if the term is inaccurate, they're going to say it. So further to what Dr. Singh Hugh was saying and what CR was saying, we're, we're probably going to have to, people who are a little less confused, I'm very, I'm, I'm still confused, but we're, we're, I think it's going to fall to people who have looked at the problem maybe in a little more depth to try and come up with a, a, a phrase that is more accurate to describe the phenomenon that they're trying to describe. Otherwise, they're just going to continue using the phrase until a better one, a more constructive one, comes along. So if if, if, if they aren't going to do it, then it, we, we might have to, you know, produce one ourselves. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, Dr. Sin? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that's, I, I believe that's exactly what we're supposed to do. Um, I think Mr. Fuller uh, did what he did just to get us started on, you know, uh, trying to find hell. There, there might even be there might even be a term or, 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 or word that he came up with this in the word guy that we might be able to apply to this. I, I don't know. But um, uh, some of those other terms we, we, we should uh, deal with too, like you said. Uh, Joe said white privilege. I remember when they started using that one. I, you know that that one was being a lot. That that one came from, and I, I always like this. Uh, you know they they call themselves white anti racists, but when you when you look at the acronym, it 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 you put those those letters together and it makes war, right? But it was a a, a, a racist suspect named Peggy McIntosh, who came up with, I believe she's the one that came up with that term. She wrote a, a, a type of a essay or something called Unpacking Your Knapsack or Unpacking Your Pack, uh, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. That's, that's, that, that's what it's called. But, um, uh, Dang, it was something else I wanted to say, but when you said white privilege, it kind of just jumped in, in my mind there. So um, I'm I'm, I'm going to shut up. Yeah, you can always come back, uh, Cr. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm laughing, laughing at CQ talking about it. I'm gonna shut up. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, that was Peggy McIntosh. Um, the like the forty-two ways that she functions as a white person—it's really ridiculous. I mean, we we used to have lots of conversations about that uh, back in the day. Uh, one of the ways was that she can she can get a a band aid that's the same color as her flesh. <laughs> it's like what? That's asinine it's, that's just asinine and a lot of black people fall for that you know with those those terms like you know white privilege and stuff like that white fragility I don't, I don't use those terms 
I don't use a lot of terms that black people use, like on code and off. I don't use that crap, man. You know, when it comes to describing the system, I haven't found any term or phrase better than racism, white supremacy. That's it. I mean, when we started using those terms back in the day, I mean, white people really don't like that. They don't like it when you attach or link racism with white supremacy. They don't like it. I mean, I'm I'm talking about jumping up and down, shouting, don't like it. You know, um, you have to keep those terms together in order to make any real traction. All these other terms that are being used, you ain't gonna get no you're gonna get nowhere fast or as Smalls used to say, at the speed of thought, you know. You're not gonna get nowhere with those terms. Just stick with the racism, white supremacy, and you'll do just fine. And a lot of people ain't gonna like it. I'm off the mic. Uh S D you had your hand up. Um yeah. I know it's late for you, you man. So I just, I just got disconnected, so and I just came back oh, into the wow. space. So <laughs> yeah, it, okay, just, okay. it just said that there was like connection issues and stuff, so I didn't even get to hear what what CR just said. So I'm just gonna have to catch it back on the recording. But uh, but yeah, well yeah. the 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 terms like some of, some of the terms I was talking about the other day, white white fragility, I'm seeing that one being used more and more and more and more now, and. Uh, uh, you know, we discussed that. Yeah, like I said, we discussed that the other day. That white fragility doesn't exactly describe the actual phenomena that we're observing in those particular white people, which is white supremacist hypervigilance or white supremacist hypersensitivity and awareness of anything that they perceive real or imagined that may threaten their practice of racism in any way, right? That's the phenomenon, but they've decided to call it white fragility. Now, they aren't a fragile people. I don't think you can be. Uh, I don't think you can keep that system in place by being fragile people and dominate and mistreat non-white people all over the planet for as long as you have been doing uh, and be a fragile people. Now, like I say, when when I looked at the phenomenon, what they were talking about, I just came up with the phrase white supremacist hypervigilance or white supremacist hypersensitivity, right? I didn't ask anyone else's permission to formulate an alternative phrase. I saw the term and decided it was inadequate or inaccurate and decided to produce my own um my own that 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 described more accurately the particular behavior of of those white supremacists and i hope more victims of racism will do the same needy fuller jr advises us to do that all the time i mean you don't need anyone else's permission to do it when you and, and when you produce those uh, an alternative phrase like that be ready to answer any questions about it because there might be some and uh and you know racism is a serious business countering it is too so, you know, the, the, the white supremacists already produce so much confusion. So I really don't want to cause any more. So I try to think really carefully before I produce any kind of phrase like that to counter one that I suspect the white supremacists are causing confusion with. But yeah, I, 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 I think we should be all of us, uh, you know, working on some more phrases. When we see these ones, we should be definitely working on counter-racist language. If it isn't, uh, language that doesn't counter or help to eliminate racism, white supremacy, isn't counter-racist language. And I guess, really, we'll only see proof that it is actually counter-racist language when we see the system... I don't know, either coming to an end or it's already eliminated. I mean, we really don't have the actual proof that any of our 
uh, counter racism, attempted. I guess this is why we usually call it attempted counter racist language. <clears throat> I guess more more accurately. And and just with a caveat, like I say, sometimes it, you, we do have some proof. Like if we're talking to a suspected white supremacist who is trying to use who is trying to use their method of practicing racism through words, and some of us have proven that you know through counter racist questions that we can disrupt that white supremacist ability to practice racism in that instant doesn't mean that they can't go somewhere else and practice it somewhere else but in that instant we, that it, it, it actually might work but anyway that's that i'm finishing out uh thank you for that ft uh before you go uh dr said uh Kweku, you haven't spoken i see you speak you got anything you want to say before uh, dr said Uh, th- thanks for thanks for having me. Thanks for having the space. Uh, can I be heard? I'm a, can, it, can I be heard? Okay. Yes, yes, you can be heard. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, not not too much to add so far. I've been in and out. Uh, the the space I found it constructive. I know anti black racism came up. Uh, that just to give just to add to it. Uh, that was a phrase that I used to use. And a, another attempt to counter racist pointed it out to me. And I'm not really sure where I got that, where I got that phrase from or why I started using it. But at the time, I, I felt it was the most accurate way to describe when a, when non-white people are mistreating each other under a system of racism, white supremacy. But a, as has been frequently stated, that that term is not accurate and it it creates a lot of opportunity for deception uh by the by the white supremacists uh so i did i did like this the suggestion of creating a word and kind of this giving it to other others other victims of racism for now i just i i stick to that's just that's non-white people mistreating each other, and that's to be expected under the system of racism and white supremacy. So uh, that, that's all that I have for now. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be Dr. Sen and then CR. Uh, just before you go, uh, before you start, Dr. Sen, um, Kweku, yes, I, I, I also I didn't use never use the word anti-black racism because I always I already knew that. Racism, that racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy is racism. But I was using the word or the phrase, uh, or maybe you could say it's a word, uh, anti-blackness. But I do kind of see, I, I have realized that how that is a slippery slope, and so uh, use that metaphor, and so I. Uh, I stopped using it as well, and I and I I do the same thing too now. I, when I describe uh, a non-white person mistreating another non-white person, I just say that's you know to exactly what you just said. So that's that's how I usually explain it as well, uh, Doctor Sin. Didn't see you Okay, yeah, I, I wanted to say that um, I think a surefire way that's what uh, when Cr was talking about. Um, how they don't like us to use racism, white supremacy together. Um, Cause I mean, really like when I first heard people using the term white privilege, I would just tell them or I'd ask them the question. I would say is, is white, is white privilege, racism, white supremacy. And um you know, usually if it was a racist suspect, I couldn't get them to, you know, it, it'd be a, a, it'd be a big dance. But when I talk to a non-white person, a, a black person, they would, um, they would agree and they would start using racism, white supremacy. The other thing I noticed too, which come from, um, a, a, a racist suspect admitted, I'm, a, I'm not even going to call him a racist suspect because he admitted, I'm, a, I'm going to use the term admitted racist. Um, 
white supremacist uh, Tim Wise, um, I, I noticed how he used to say racism and white supremacy, and a lot of victims started picking up and using, you know, using the phrase like that. And what ha- what generally happens is I think when 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 we pick up these terms in a, you know, just in an exchange in the conversation, it maybe it kind of sounds good or just has a ring to it or something. And, 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 and then you, you, you end up borrowing it and using it, you know, somewhere else. Um, but I think a surefire way to know if, 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 if you're, if you're, if the words that you're using are, counter racist is when it upsets the white person when you use it. And that's it. See ya. Oh yeah, I just wanted to add something to what Smoking Damages was saying about how, you know, at a certain point the white people uh may not be able to practice racism, white supremacy against you and they'll they'll go somewhere else and practice it or something to that effect. I hate paraphrasing. Um but yeah they, they do that all the time. I mean they play the percentages. You know they play the percentages. If if they can't get um one non white person you know under their thumb so to speak and they'll go find another one. And they'll try to get that non-white person who was resisting, you know, to uh, to work against the other one that they're working against. I've experienced that on a job. You know, so, uh, boy, I got some stories. But we don't have the time. <laughs> we don't have the time right now. But, yeah, they play the percentages. Um that whole white privilege thing just it's just really odd how black people would would fall for that you know it's it's really odd um, because you know once you ask the question, well, who gives white people white privilege? See that's the clincher right there because the answer got to be white people. Oh, well, that's the system of racism, white supremacy, <laughs> you know, a system set up, you know, it's just real simple questions that, boom, you know, you can weed right through that jargon. You know, it's like police privilege. What's police privilege? Qualified immunity, right? He, he, he set up a system of policing <laughs> well, police could just run around and mistreat each other at will mistreat people who are not police at will you know it's a lot of different and, and nothing is done to them about it you know because they are you know they are immune to any punishment as a result there's a lot of different examples that can be used um but that one question, you know, that's like E equals MC squared, you know, fits in the palm of your hand. That, that's how the universe works, you know. When you can boil all those questions down into one question, who gives white people white privilege? Man, you fast forward the conversation light years. But I've had some white people to try to say, that you know black people give white people white privilege <laughs> like, so yeah i understand how our privilege works you know is um something that somebody more powerful gives to you someone or something that's more powerful gives to you for example i mean they, they they'll give you driving privileges all right. Somebody more powerful than you will say, OK, you know, you now have driving privileges. And if you mess up, you know, they'll take those privileges away from you. So 
when it comes to who gives white people white privilege. It's got to be somebody that's more powerful than white people that gives them white privilege. Uh, based on that logic. And um, yeah, I've had them say, oh, black people. Oh, so you're trying to say black people are more powerful than white people? <laughs> See, there's no way for them to get out of that. There's no way for them to get out of that. So yeah, I, I, I cringe when I hear uh, black people using those terms because I know they're not going to get nowhere using them. I'm off the mic. Um, Martin, you had your hand up? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, CR, um, I have thought about that same question when I thought about white privilege. Okay, privilege, you know, um, it's given by a higher authority. So who's higher than white people that are giving them this privilege? I've definitely right. thought about that, and I have asked white people that question. And they either run. I haven't heard the black people give them that, but then I have heard that everybody is individual. So um, there's no global system of white people. Everybody's individual. Um, I don't believe in that. Um, I've even heard them say that God, Area 7, you know, God's given them you know, this authority. I'm sure, you know, we kind of maybe heard this in passing. But just to say, um, I've seen as far as accurate counter-racist language, I've seen in terms, let's say, Peggy McIntyre, the one who made up the term. Uh, um, I believe Justice was 11, either 10 or 11 on that show, and she's the one that I would suspect forced Peggy McIntyre to leave the broadcast on the context of white supremacy in 09, I believe, just by using accurate terms. Got her so flustered, she left the show very early. It was very telling that this, you know, this this supposed legend of anti-racism is so flustered by a 10 year old victim of racism. Um, I found that. In closing, whatever words that they don't want victims using the most, I would say, keep using them. That's what I want to say. I'll stop there. Uh, Dr. Sin, um, is it OK? Could uh, SD go first because it's kind of late for him? Compared to you, it's kind of early. Can he go first before you, if it's okay? Sure, sure, sure. All right. Go ahead, SD. Wow. So much courtesy in this space. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bowed over. Um, <laughs> thanks, you. Thanks, you guys. Um, you know what? I was, in, <laughs> I was in a space the other day with a, with a white woman who said she's going to use her privilege to do something about racism. This is suspected racist white woman that said that she's going to use her privilege to do something about racism. I said to her, why don't you use your power? And she said, oh, you see, power is a more accurate term than privilege. Yeah, the, the, the system of racism, white supremacy gives white people more power on the planet than non-white people. So... Uh, yeah, I, I suggest any time a white person said that, like CR said, um, and I was talking about this in my space the other day, uh, we, talked, we discussed uh, white privilege at some length. And uh, yeah, just that's that's my suggested question the other day as well. Ask them where, ask them where do you get your privileges from? Or more accurately, where do you get your power from? You see, a lot of white people are really comfortable talking about, yeah, I can get my flesh colored band aid and I can, I've got the, I've got the privilege to not get stopped and searched or walk around, the, walk around, I don't know, a shopping mall, not being followed around like black people. They're always comfortable talking about their privileges, but they aren't so comfortable talking about how much power they have in comparison to black people, which is what the system of racism, white supremacy gives them. Power is a far more accurate term than, than privilege. System of white power. System of racism, white supremacy. Uh, as, uh, Dr. Sin? Okay, yeah, so... Um, uh, victims... I was going to say, so when it comes to that, I, I've also observed 
uh, a lot of victims in, in conversation telling me um, not to use the words white supremacy because that's how white people get their power, that we, we're giving them power by using the terms uh, white supremacy. Um, so I, I, I'm now I'm realizing that, of course, they got that from being, you know, some other white people have probably told them that because they don't want to use they don't want the word the term white supremacy being used. Um, and the thing I was going to say about justice, that was, I, I just wanted to say I, that was one of the things that I. I observe it, a child. It seems children are so more so much more um, matter of fact, you know, once once they, you know, get to a question that it, it just goes, you know, like straight to the point and the average racist suspect, it seems to me, when, when we're having these conversations, they like to just give you a whole lot of words and have you going around in circles. And, uh, you know, by the time the conversation is done, you, you're still where you were. Um, in fact, you might have even dug yourself into a deeper hole um, after the conversation. And, I, you know, with justice, you could just get right right there to the point. And 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 I've I've witnessed a lot of uh, racist suspects leave the show because of that. So okay, but that's it. Um, so I see you joined. Uh, you have any uh, uh thoughts, comments? Piece of reading. So I'm gonna make this short. Um, we're talking about white privilege and what something that I want people to think about, people who listen to this now and in the future, um, think about, would you call what happened during the Buffalo, the Buffalo um, shooting, grocery store shooting, a privilege or murder? Would you call what Dylan Roof did when he went to Charleston and shot up those nine people, non-white, non-white black people, would you call that a privilege or murder? See, see how you notice how like it doesn't sound right to say white privilege that he shot them and that was privilege. No, that was murder. So that's where accurate terms come in. So um, just notice the two and like you know which ones sound better. Which which one is the most accurate term to use? You know, at this moment, would it be privilege or murder? I say murder if we're going to be accurate with our terms. So that's what counter races logic, I mean, not language, that's what it's all about, being accurate with our terms, and, you know, I just want y'all to think. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, SD, you had a comment? Yeah, um, talking about justice on the cows, I remember when she was talking about, um, when she was talking to Barbara Trepanier. I don't know if you guys remember Barbara Trepanier. Uh, she wrote that book, Silent Racism, and Justice asked her, you know, and she was talking about that. She, she, funny enough, she did say that we should be using the term white supremacy a bit more. But anyway, she would talk about privilege as well. And then, uh, and this goes to show how white people are very comfortable, more comfortable talking about privilege, but less comfortable about, um, talking about what they actually do to practice racism what do you actually do to practice it so when justice justice asked her what what are some of the things that you and your children do to practice racism all of a sudden that's when the interview went south and that's when uh barbara chopinier left <laughs> that's when she started getting really angry and just left the left the broadcast just a, 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 a again white white uh suspected white supremacists or admitted white supremacists in Barbara Trepanier's case. Um, yeah, very comfortable talking about things like privilege, but not really comfortable talking about what they do to actually practice racism, white supremacy. Racism is an action. You have to choose to practice it. You have to choose to practice it by apathy, or you have to choose to practice it with actual deeds, Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say about that. Privilege, dangerous term, white privilege. So, 
Yeah, Tana. I was in a space over the weekend, and with a white host, he had a non-white co-host, and all the other speakers who had the mic, they they were white. So my question was directed towards them, the white people. And I asked, so what's your definition of racism, white supremacy? The host purposely, and this is something I want y'all to pay attention to, he purposely said, oh, what's my definition of racism? Completely left out white supremacy. Just speaking on what CR mentioned a while back. So I'm like, um, no, I it say the whole word, racism, white supremacy. Notice, white people don't like to, like to throw in white supremacy. They don't throw in that part. They keep with the racism part because their definition, which is deceit, includes us. We could be racist too. No, no, that's incorrect. But they like to throw us in there. So, yeah, so that's just something I, I want y'all to pay attention to and notice. And, and white people, they don't like to use the accurate term racism, white supremacy, all together, all three words together. <laughs> um, yeah, so whenever, like what was said earlier, whatever white people, racist man, racist woman, what they don't want us to do, that's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be saying because that's the most accurate term. They always try to move away from the term white supremacy. I wonder why. I end. Uh, see ya. You yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I I don't remember who it was that said something about using the term white supremacy. Um, black people try to get other black people not to use that term, says it gives white people power or something by, by using that term. That was me that said that. I, that was me that said that. I said a, a, a lot of victims have told me that. Who is that, you, Joe? Uh, that's Dr. And, uh, oh, that was thank you? Oh, yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, that the, just to add to that, uh, also, Mr. Fuller said uh, some people on his show actually call in and try to get him not to say white supremacy. I think someone called recently and asked him, oh, you got racism in your book, on, on the front of your book, but... We need you to, uh, could you stop saying white supremacy? Yeah, so. Yeah, they don't, they don't understand that we're in a race war. You know, it's positional, in other words. The, um, white people who practice racism, white supremacy are in a supreme position in this weight race war. In other words, they, they are winning a race war. You know, I understand that there are a lot of black people. When you say white supremacy, they have almost an allergic reaction to it. <laughs> you know, they start breaking out in hives and whatnot. Um, but it's real simple, simply explained that, you know, I'm talking about a race war. And somebody's got to be winning that race war. And it ain't us. You know. So who is in the supreme position? Because non-white people are in the inferior position in this race war. So, I mean, who... And, you know, get get people to answer for themselves. Um, they They'll understand the logic but they still don't want to use the term. And, you know, they qualified not to use the term. You know, no problem there. I think I was talking to Martin one day. I think it was Martin. Um, about I played a clip for him of Mr. Fuller who was saying all black people are non-white. And all non-white people are black, even the yellow ones. <laughs> Mr. Fuller said that. And I asked him, I said, you do realize that's Mr. Fuller in that clip saying that, right? And he said, yeah, but I don't agree with him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's a lot of parts of the code that black people don't agree with. And they qualified not to agree with it. So, I mean, counter-racism code is, is a, a smorgasbord. 
you know, you pick and choose what you want to use to work for you. You know, it's a buffet, in other words. Uh, nobody's going to remember everything in those books. Nobody. You know, uh, I talked to Mr. Fuller about some things. And he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go get my book, you know. <laughs> um, and you have to tell him what page it's on. And he take a look at it, and he explain the logic to you right off the bat. But uh, said that to say, even Mr. Fuller don't remember everything that's in there word for word. So nobody's going to remember everything. So you pick and choose what you want to use on any given day at any given time. And uh, that's how kind of racism is supposed to be used. Uh, it's kind of like the way that white people use racist code. You know, they don't all do the same things at the same time. And we've heard some evidence of that right here in this room. People have spoken to that. You know, some people will say one thing. Other white people will say another thing. Other white people will say something different. Uh, but it's the cumulative effect of all of them mistreating people based on color that makes up the system. I'm off the mic. SD? Yeah, just in just in terms of miss, uh, uh, the misleading terms, again, one I have to mention, I don't know if it's been mentioned already, actually, um, but the term Karen being used for, I mean, when it, as far as I can remember, when it first started to be used, it was being used to this, well, <laughs> I wouldn't even say describe because it's a name. A name's not a description, but when they when they first started using it, as far as I, I remember, it was just referring to white women who practice racism. Um, <laughs> but you know now, like like what's been said in this room already, the the white supremacists are definitely promoting that phrase, that name, so much because it, it doesn't have white in it let alone white supremacist. You know, if you if you mean a white woman who's practicing racism, white supremacy, just say it's a white woman practicing racism, white supremacy, or a white person practicing racism, white supremacy. The name of the woman is, is quite frankly, irrelevant. Whatever name you're going to... I don't think, you know, that... <laughs> and that's the only... I think that's the only reason, really, that it's been promoted so much, because Karen doesn't describe anything. It doesn't describe the phenomena. It doesn't describe what's what's happening. So, yeah, Karen is another misleading uh, term that definitely promotes racism, white supremacy. It's definitely not a counter-racist term. Yeah, the, the, forget the term Karen. Useless. Uh, Dr. Sin? Yeah, I wanted to say, uh, I remember when I saw that first coming out in use uh, because there was a, a, a situation out here racist suspect that some, some victims of uh, white supremacy were barbecuing at a park in Oakland and she was making a big deal about it and calling the police on them and the the news had put her name out there everybody was trying to figure out they, they, they dubbed her Barbecue Becky he was calling her Barbecue Becky but the news had put her real name out there. I, I believe it's constructive to know which, I mean, even, even though any white person who's able to practice racism um, is, is viewed as a, a racist suspect, I believe it's constructive to know who they are as individuals. Um, and, and, you know, I, I wanted to devise a list of where we could keep track of them. But anyway, um, I noticed when the second incident happened, it was a, it was a, a racist suspect, it was a, a white 
a woman in San Francisco that called the police, called law enforcement on a 10 year old black uh, girl for selling water. And then, and then it, it just kind of, after that, it just kind of became a trend. It just went all over. And all of a sudden, they started calling them Karens. And I thought, it, it, seemed, it appeared to me that calling them Karens was actually of protection. It, 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 it serves as more of a, of, a, of a protection than it does as, uh, you know, anything else. And, and these days now, any, any, it looks like any uh, female, whether they're white or non-white, that starts complaining about something is called a Karen now. I've seen a lot of videos now where they have a non-white person in the, in the video and they're saying, look at this Karen, you know. Um, so... I agree. That's that's another one that, that should be taken out of use. Uh, CR. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, anything to keep from saying that you know they're in a supreme position. You know, we use all all different kind of language to keep from admitting that to ourselves. I think I. When I, I talked to 0526 early on, he's in the room right now. He's in the space. I wouldn't say this if he wasn't already in the space. When I talked to him early on and asked asked him, why do you want, why do you want to go down that counter-racism path, man? It's red pill after red pill after red pill. I mean, it's a whole lot of stuff that you're just going to have to accept that that's the way the system works, man. Ain't no blue pills on that path, <laughs> you know. And I don't think he really answered that question for me. But it's, um, yeah, it, it, you have to take a look at things just the way that they are, you know. And uh, that's very difficult for a lot of black, black people will get mad at you for making them do that. You know, that's why I say counter-racism is for victims of racism, white supremacy, who know they are victims of racism, white supremacy. You don't believe that that's true? You try to convince a non-white person that they are victim of racism, white supremacy, and they don't want to be convinced of that. You're going to find out real quick that it ain't for them. You know, it ain't going to take long at all. Uh, I mean, you know, make make sure you, you know, you're at least a green belt in your karate class because you're going to need it. You know, so you really got to be careful talking to uh, non-white people about how the system works. Um, I got a question for, I heard somebody earlier say attempted counter-racism. Uh, attempted counter racist. So, does a an attempted counter racist use counter racism language, or do they use attempted counter racism language? That's my question. I'm off the mic. I guess that question for you, SD, because you're the one who used the term. Oh, was he the one who used the term? Oh, I didn't. Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, oh, I, was, I, I, I used that term too. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I use um just for purposes of clarity, yeah, I, I use the term counter racism and attempted counter racism. Um Oh, so you you use being, both? I use both terms. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, Fre I got you. frequently. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I, yep, I, use, yep. I use the reason I was the u reason I was saying attempted counter racism is because I've seen some evidence I've seen some incidents, I've seen some evidence that I think, I don't know, all the different types of things collectively that non-white people have done to counter the system, and the system is still here. system of white supremacy is still here. So I look at all the efforts as attempted counter-racism, and I think maybe I'll be more convinced that they're actually working if there's evidence and I say, yeah, that definitely counters it. They, you know, we don't, we don't have racism here anymore. I can't say that, 
because I don't have proof of that because the, the, the system of white supremacy is still here. So that's why I say attempted counter-racism. And the reason I do say counter-racism is really it's a psycho it's really a it's a psychology kind of thing it kind of one it kind of spurs me on to keep myself going that's just my that's just a personal thing for me uh it, it spurs me on to keep doing what i'm doing and finding out a little more about uh how the system works and sometimes if i test it to use that metaphor, counter racist sword or whatever, or I, I try to counter a white supremacist method of practicing racism, and it works in that instant, in that in in that instant, then I think to myself, okay, if I do that and I've used that method and it seems to have worked against that white supremacist chosen method of practicing racism at that moment. Maybe if other victims do like-minded things or do the same thing, maybe that might have the effect of countering the system. Now, like I said, I don't, I don't have any proof of that because I think in order to, for me to get the proof, more non-white people are probably going to have to do like-minded things or the same types of things. So that's why I use both terms. I don't oh, know if I, I answered. So, yeah, that, I don't know if I answered yeah. the question. That's just yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like in that moment, it's uh, like a drop of chocolate in a gallon of milk. Now it's chocolate so, in that milk. You, you're you're gonna have to explain that. <laughs> yeah. So know. it it's it's chocolate in that milk. You just can't see it. You know, you put a drop of chocolate in a gallon of milk, and uh, that milk's oh, still yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. white. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like, it's like, it's like faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like faith. So I I think I've got a bit of faith and and belief, I guess we can call it, that counter race. It's like Mister Fuller's book, right? For example, I bought that book and I've read it. I've read it several times, Word Guide as well, I've read Dr. Fry. I've read lots and lots of books uh, that talk about racism and different things we can do to solve the problem. Um, and I think Need for Book is excellent in my opinion, right? Now, the proof of it working, if I'm really honest with myself, I don't know. But I think if more, the reason I try and tout it and, and try and get other victims to read it is because I, I think that if more of us adopted what's in that book, I think we'll see even more proof that it might work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I went to Mr. Fuller with that early on. I, I said, uh, Fuller, you don't know what this is going to produce. You walk around here talking about producing justice. You don't know what this is going to produce. It might just produce mayhem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, you're right. He said, but yeah, you can measure it at times. And, you know, later, years later, you know, when I develop the logic to explain it to myself, then I went to him with that logic. And he said, yes, 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 that, that that's how it works. You know, so, yeah, you, you can measure it at times. Um, the logic that I came up with was, you know, how the racist white supremacists have to keep non-white people focused on and in conflict with each other. They have to do that in order to keep the system going. That's one of the have to's. And they got quite a few of them. Um, so when I do one or two things, either I minimize that, minimize that conflict by maximizing constructive interaction, or I minimize conflict by minimizing contact, I'm actually working against the system. When I do one of those two things in my interaction with non-white people, Right then, I'm practicing counter-racism. I'm not attempting to. I'm practicing it. In my interaction with non-white people, if I don't do no name calling, I'm practicing counter-racism.
you know. So counter racism, I know a lot of people think that counter racism is what you practice in order to produce justice, but nothing produces justice unless you produce injustice. This is something that a lot of non-white people who are into counter-racism should think about and run it by Mr. Fuller. Run it by Mr. Fuller and let him explain it. It's counter-racism is supposed to get you to the point where you can produce justice, but it is not in and of itself producing justice. And Mr. Fuller and I talked about different terms, you know, like using promoting justice by practicing counter-racism and whatnot. I don't know if he ever included any of that stuff in his new book. I haven't read his new book. But you really have to think about what it is that you're doing when you're doing it. You know, I, I said something to uh, Sin Q, and after I say this, I'm going to get off the mic. I'll probably leave, uh, leave the room. I've got some errands to run. Looking at my military watch. <laughs> um, that one of the things, one of the things about that, definition of justice that Mr. Fuller changed to um, the new definition, guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help. It was gets the most help initially, and Bill Reeves put that constructive part in, just in case nobody knew, and then Mr. Fuller adopted that. Um. But that's the way that I got Mr. Fuller to change maximum emergency compensatory justice to maximum emergency compensatory action. And I'm telling you, he was arguing about that. He was on the phone for 40, 45 minutes. He was arguing about that. And I was telling him, that's, that's not justice, Mr. Fuller. That's not, you know, that's not justice. Because he had just changed the term, changed the definition to the word justice. And I said, you got, you talking about not mistreating people. If you're not mistreating people, how are you killing people? <laughs> I mean, those two things don't go together. See, with the old definition of justice, which was balance between people, then it was really subjective on how you get to balance between people by enacting maximum emergency compensatory justice. It was really subjective how you get to that point. But the new definition of justice is it, what Mr. Fuller did is he put the logic to producing it into the definition. So is make no mistake about it. He had to eventually succumb to the logic, <laughs> you know, and, and he didn't want to, he did it. Screaming and scratching, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but eventually he said, you know, yeah, that's a very astute observation. Uh, and I gave him several names to choose from and he chose action, you know, and he did that. Kicking and screaming too. Oh, it's action, it's action, it's that. Oh, all right, calm down, Mr. Fuller. <laughs> calm down. But said that to say this. Because I posted on Twitter something back in summer of last year and asked, you know, why is it that Mr. Fuller keeps using the term balance between people whenever he says justice in his new book when he's already given the word justice a better definition 
And I was giving something away if somebody answered the question, but no, nobody was ever able to answer it. And I think it's because, and I know this is being recorded, so that's good. I think it's because if you keep using the term or the phrase balance between people, he can keep the term correctness. I think that's why I haven't spoken to him about that, but I think that's why. Because if you use the new definition of justice, you produce correctness by producing justice. You don't even need the definition of the word correctness anymore. By guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and also guaranteeing that the people who need help the most get the most constructive help, you will produce the balance between people and things. I just, I just want people to think about that. You might not agree with it now, but just think about it and keep thinking about it. And next time we talk, I'd appreciate anybody's views on that. I'm off the mic. It was something you were going to ask me, you said, right? Say again? Didn't you say it was something you wanted to ask me? No, 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 no. I said it was something I wanted to say about, and I didn't use this word at the time, uh, about the timeline of events. See, I posted something on the work study project a while back, and, and your response to it, CNQ, was, oh, that's interesting. And that was um, what I just explained that the reason Mr. Fuller changed maximum emergency compensatory justice to maximum emergency compensatory action was because he had redefined the word justice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that was, yeah. That was a while, while back. That was a yeah, while I, I remember I, that. I remember that uh, we even had a conversation about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. made more sense. It made a lot more, it was much more logical to use the word action over justice. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the timeline of events and how things change. So the new definition, with the new definition of justice, a whole lot of stuff in the first book, which are still in the second book, don't stand up no more. And like I said, I haven't read the second book. But people have sent me uh, pictures of what's in the book. You know, ask, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think? You know, and say, yeah, well, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's interesting because that new definition of justice, like it totally eradicates correctness altogether. Because you're going to produce it anyway. I'm off the mic. Um. See, uh, I know you're about to leave real quick. Um, is it one last thing before you leave? Uh, do you have any uh suggestions on how best to use? Uh, you probably already alluded to it already, but how best to use kind of racing language? Um, I guess in context with uh, uh, non white people, how best to use kind of racism language? Yes, sir. And I talked about that earlier in, in uh, in this space, um, you know, which is to try to figure out what exactly it is that the person is talking about. Try to figure out what it is, what information that they're trying to get from you. And slowly but surely, you know, just slowly introduce counter-racism language into the conversation. You know, they, oh, do you mean such and such and such? You know, it's, no, I don't mean that. You know, I mean, blah, 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 blah. You know, just keep having a conversation with them. Uh, because, like I said, as Josh Wicked used to say, um, you know, you got to give it to them. You got to spoon fed people. You got to spoon. Uh, spoon feed. Spoon feed people, you know, at a pace that they can consume it. You know, so. At all times, you're trying to stay away from conflict. 
You got to keep that in the back of your mind. You got to stay away from conflict. And just slowly trying to introduce, you know, the language to him. I was having a conversation with a guy not long ago and about his new job. Well, actually, it was a long time ago uh, about his new job. He was a manager, you know, and um, I was a manager at the time. And he was uh, asking me about, um, you know, ways to be successful on the job and whatnot. And I asked him, I said, you got white people reporting to you? He said, yeah. And so I gave him some suggestions on what to say what not to say, what to do, what not to do. Which were counter-racism suggestions. You know, so I gave him one at first, and after he tried that out, he said, hey, man, you know, that was real interesting what you said. I tried that out, you know, and it worked. Um, so I gave him another one, and then another one. You know, I, don't, I, th I think I only gave him, like, three. But... It's it's that process right there. So you got to, you know, give people constructive information. And at the same time, if they're ready to accept it. Also give them counter racism strategies and techniques using counter racism language. Now, whether or not they use that counter racism language, that's totally up, up to them. I mean, most oftentimes they they won't, but they will use the strategy. Or they will use the technique. Mark the mic. Uh, Martin and then Monsoon, I think you both had your hands up. I'm okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. What about you, Monsoon? Do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add... Um... Like this, this, this pretty much just sounds like a part two of what uh, Smoking was doing uh, the other day. So, uh, pretty, pretty constructive. But I wanted to add, since he brought up the uh, term Karen, I actually wrote that down uh, during his space. Um, I just didn't speak on it um, as it was going on before we talked to the uh, white woman. But um, I also wrote down hate crime. <laughs> and I was listening to. Uh, the uh, archives of the cows and one of the white guests said the term hate crime. So I just wrote that down. And then as I'm listening to the archives, he brought it up to uh, Dr. Wellesley. So when I looked it up and um, uh, smoking brought up um, unconscious bias, I had read that definition off. But then when I read the definition for hate crime, it was sort of the same thing. They would just add uh, it's just that it, uh, you know, added saying that it was a, a you know actual crime, but it also related to uh, a person's uh, sexual orientation, uh, ethnicity, and religion. So again, like you know, when, when white people are using these terms, <laughs> you know, it's, it's again just ask, ask yourself this question: Does this, uh, or basically, is this a a uh, correct term to use when? discussing uh, white, white, uh, white supremacy racism. So I just wanted to add that. I'm out. Thank you so much, uh, Mansoon. Uh, Kweku and then Dr. Sin. Yeah, I wanted to attempt to <laughs> answer counter's, counter CR's question. I guess I'm not attempting, I'm answering it. About attempted counter racism versus counter racism. So I, I'm, I'm normally try to always say attempted counter racist just because of the of the logic of how how can I know when I'm practicing counter racism uh, so I, I appreciate what CR was saying about practicing counter racism it's essentially being doing act in that moment acting against the system of racism white supremacy that you are countering the system. So it's it's easy because I think it came up. It's easy for me to see how choosing the in in certain situations choosing to practice counter racism how that has I guess had an effect in my in my personal life and 
those around me, it's harder to see how it has more of a global effect. So when, when I think about practicing counter racism, I think more, I think thinking more about how, how it affects me in my personal life versus the, uh, the global, the global aspect because practicing counter racism, uh, Dr. Walsing would often say, you know, the work starts with, with yourself. So starting, starting to become codified yourself. Start practicing the code in your own life and practicing it in that way. Uh, earlier it came up, but I, I wanted to also mention an instance where I had used some counter, uh, some counter racist language, I, I would say, or developed a question. Um, oftentimes when speaking to white people, the question gets asked to them, uh, who's more informed about the system of racism and white supremacy? And I noticed with that question, like 90% of the time, pretty, pretty much like 98, 99% of the time, the, uh, the white people respond that non-white people are, are more informed about the system. You know, I, I have also heard it and I've also refined it myself to who is more informed about the system of racism, white supremacy, what it is and how it works, being a little bit more specific. And it still comes back to the the answer is still the same it's uh it's non-white people um so i i i there are a lot of instances where i feel that i know the answer i'm testing i'm i'm trying to test the question see if uh, i can get a racist suspect to actually reveal truth Right, but instead, in that, in those instances, it's they've stuck with deceit. Um, so I refine the question again to who, who is responsible for creating, implementing, maintaining, and refining the system of racism, white supremacy, white people or non-white people? Uh, for that question, I got, I got the the white, the white people, <laughs> white people are responsible. Um, so I think, so I, that, that was more of a, an example of where I, I've noticed where I feel I'm actually practicing counter racism in, in that, in that minute by re- refining a question, using, getting a question to reveal truth about the system, ha- forcing a, a racist suspect to either stop talking or to reveal truth about the system. That's, that's all that I have for now. Thanks. Um, I hate to ask uh, Dr. Cinder to uh, yield again, <laughs> but uh, I know C.R. is about to leave soon. It's up to uh, Dr. Cinder if you want to yield it or go ahead. Um, no. No, I'm just playing. I gave you the choice, so go ahead. Continue. Hey, I ain't mad. I ain't mad at you. Me and CQ do that all the time. We've been knowing each other for 20 years. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, you go ahead, brother. You go ahead. I'm going to stick around a little bit longer. Okay, <laughs> oh, okay. no, I was, I, was just, I was just playing. I'm, I'm courteous. Go ahead. No, no, no. Do your thing. Gotta... Nah, do your thing, man. Do your thing. Oh, do your okay, thing. I'll... All right. I was just going to say real quick that it seems like the term hate crime is another one of those uh, – that, that works just like, uh, anti-white, I mean, anti-black racism or reverse racism. Um, and, and they're charging a lot of victims with hate crimes now. I, I see that, um, in, in the news uh, where a lot of instances where victims of white supremacy are being charged with hate crimes. So I think that also helps add to the confusion of what racism is and how it works. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sia? Uh, oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, give Quaker his props for, you know, refining the, uh, his questions and whatnot. That's, that's the way you do it. Um, until you can get a truthful answer. You know, uh, 
uh, first time I went out to run counter racism science experiments with uh, uh, Melvin and Monica and Sabrina and whatnot, and they were asking the question, you know, are you white? And um, and I started asking the question, are you a white person? You know, adding a bit of refinement to it, making the question more personable. Um, and that, I'm going to tell you right now, that still don't guarantee you're going to get the truth. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, one thing Kwaku said is... Uh, you know, something that Dr. Wilson said, yeah, it's, it starts with you. Yeah, you got to, that's, that's working on you and working on your refinement of counter-racism as an individual non-white person. That's, that's the most important thing, you know. Um, and, and like I said, it's, you know, alluding to what, smoking damages were saying earlier is, you know, you may not see it, you know, like I said, it's like a drop of chocolate in a gallon of milk. It's there. You know, you may not see it. Now as more and more non-white people begin to, uh, to do it, to practice counter racism, you know, that white milk is going to get more and more brown you know, that's the way it works. And white people are going to start taking notice when it starts to get brown. You know, even before it starts to get brown, because they are listening to the language that we use all the time. You know, they're giving us language to use. And if we go against that and start using something that reveals truth and we have an understanding of how to use that truth that has been revealed to promote justice, you know, we start talking about strategies and techniques and whatnot to promote justice. Oh, yeah, they stand up and pay attention to that. Don't think that they don't. So I'm telling you right now, when you're out in them streets like we used to be, running them counter-racism science experiments and, you know, make sure you have your heat on you, <laughs> you know, because anything can go down. Anything can go down, so make sure you protect yourself at all times. I'm off the mic. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Sun. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to add to that. I, I can see it. Like, o over the past uh, 20 years since um, the, the a, a number of us have been using the code, I can, I can see the um the refinement of white supremacy these terms that we're using right that, that we're discussing right now like anti-black racism and you know and white privilege those are responses i i believe that those are responses to the work that we're doing like you know you even hear uh you know, racist suspects uh within the incorrect government coming out and using the term systemic racism you know, they, they, it's 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 close to the system of white supremacy, but we already know they don't like using the word white supremacy. But they're coming out and, uh, you know, coming out with all these apologies and 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 I, I, I remember when uh, the discussions about reparations was going on 30, 40 years ago, and it never made the uh the main you know the, the the mainstream like the way it is now like it's it's being discussed everywhere and and stuff like that so i i think that that um some of that is 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 because of the work that's being done by by uh by us uh see you had your hand up first oh yeah i agree with that 100% uh thank you i, I... Uh, Dr. Sinq, I agree with that 100%. Um, we used to call it that they are trying to counter counter racism. That's how we used to describe it back in the day. 
Uh, and they've been trying to do that for a long time. Uh, and the way that they do that is to practice racism and white supremacy. You know, they come out with more terms and get more people to accept it and get black people to use the terms that they come out with. A lot of those black people, they are paying them. They're paying them money to say things a certain way. Um, and it's a lot of black people in need. So a lot of black people are accepting that money, you know. And they'll give them, give them a platform to talk in, um, you know, a house in the Hamptons, whatever the case may be. And, um, yeah, they, that, that's just them trying to counter, counter racism. Um, and, and playing the percentages while they're doing it, you know, if they can get 40% of the people in this area of the world, <laughs> You know, 20% of the people in another area of the world, they play the percentages like that all the time. So uh, I agree with that uh, assessment 100%. I'm off the mic. Uh, SD? Yeah, I've, I've been noticing, um, especially this past year, uh, a lot of white uh, they, they've been using the term white supremacy lots and lots of times now more and more frequently the white supremacists have especially so called uh, even more frequently as a lot of so called uh, uh, white academics university professors uh, white people who are writing books uh, you talk if, if you spend any kind of time talking to other I don't know, especially a lot of younger white people as well. That I, I don't know, they're, they're obviously teaching this kind of stuff in schools, uh, certainly over here in the UK. And I've spoken to other people, other white people in the US as well. They're using that term quite frequently now, white supremacy. But, you know, as uh, as Mr. Fuller says and been saying for a long time, they uh, and Dr. Welsing says, like, they, they work out, you work out the game, and then they change the rules, right? <laughs> That's what he say that all the time. It's like you work out how they, you work out how this, then they, they just change. You work out their strategy, and they just experts are just changing it around again. So they sprinkle a little poison when they use white supremacy. They sprinkle a little poison into it, and they start using stuff like uh, they they'll use the term white supremacy, but then they'll say also uh, I don't know intersectionality or you know, other terms like white fragility, they'll they'll still use the other terms with white supremacy. They aren't gonna just use that alone. <clears throat> they'll just they'll just keep using all these other misleading phrases as well, just to further confuse us. It definitely when you ask them about what racism white supremacy is and if that's the most accurate term that we should use, they say, Well, you know, we do need to talk about intersectionality and how racism affects uh, I don't know, uh, the LGBTQ community and how it affects blah, 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 and patriarchy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's all they do. They sprinkle a little bit of poison in it. So anything that we do, anything that we say, we don't have any secrets from the white supremacists. We have no secrets from them. So that's why I don't believe in kind of hiding anything away from, <laughs> from white supremacists. I talk to white people all the time. And say, yeah, that that is my intention to uh, to counter what you're doing, to counter the system, um, because whether we think we have secrets from them or not, we we really don't. And as I think Dr. Sinkyu and CR were saying earlier, in anything you do, they're going to know about it, and uh, and they're going to and they're going to counter it. They're going to well, they're going to try and counter it. They're going to try and counter counter racism, and around and around and around it will go. But I think. I still have faith, I guess is the word to use, that uh, if we keep resisting and if we become smarter than the white supremacists, which is what we're going to have to do, there's no shortcuts or anything at the moment. The white supremacists are more powerful and they are smarter. That's that's it. We're, we're going to have to become smarter. There's no other way around it we are going to have to come up with a better strategy and become smarter than the white supremacists 
uh, and that that's it. That's that's what I'm gonna say about that. Uh, do I have to say? And then see y'all. Yeah, yeah. What um what you just said, smoking damages. You you're absolutely correct. I agree with that because I have um I uh, going back. I'm gonna go back to like you know 20 years ago again when I because when I first got on YouTube and I got into this thing they called the great race debate or whatever. And I was having these conversations with these uh, white people who called themselves white nationalists. Um, they kept, you know, the, a lot of the white people I was speaking to kept pointing at uh, Ku Kluckers and, and Nazis as being white supremacists. And I see they they still use that term today. Like uh, just the other day, I saw something in the, in the news about some whites. They said some white supremacists uh tried to knock out some power grid or something. So I noticed that it, at least from my observation, they'll still use it, but they make it, they make it seem as if, uh, it's a less sophisticated, uh, white person that's practicing white supremacy. You know, that beer drinking, uh, you know, pickup truck driving, tobacco chewing type dude that's, uh, you know, with the rebel flag and all that. Um, and I, I think that's a part of their refinement process. Um, to 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 make us even more confused, and that's it. Go ahead, Cr. You got it. Yeah. After after the Cr, I'm gonna uh, get ready to close. Um, I, before I close though, after the Cr talks, I want um, can you repeat uh, Dr. Sin, the uh, thing you mentioned about in um, kind of racism dot com about uh. It's, it's basically how to use kind of racist language or uh, have a conversation rather. Oh yeah. That was called, I, I believe it was called compensatory conversation control. Yeah. That's and right. and I, I said, I saw it on there, but I can't remember. I, I was hoping it's uh CR would um, let me know. Yeah. If, that, that's, that that down for if it's, if it's still, if that's up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's still up there. Um, and one one of the ways. So, thank you. Laid it out really good. Um, I think the second point that he made on it is, you know, it, you can practice that with non-white people as well. I mean, he didn't say that, but I mean, if you in a conversation with non-white people, it seems to be getting heated and whatnot. If you only say something. If that non-white person asks you a question, if they don't ask you a question, don't say nothing. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden the conversation will begin to shut down, you know, because uh, that's basically what an argument is, right? It's two people that's making statements back and forth. Ain't nobody asking no questions. And somebody will say something that somebody else won't like. So then they'll say something that somebody else won't like. And before you know it, you got a real good argument going. So that's really what's what's taking place. Uh, but if you you can control that conversation in a compensatory manner by not saying anything unless the person asks you a question, and once they do that, then you make a very brief attempt to answer their question, and don't say anything other than that. And that way you keep the conversation as constructive as possible. You know, as constructive a, a conversation can be between two prisoners, you know, because you got to keep that in mind at all times. Uh, wanted to say something else. Oh, uh, I think it was in reference to what uh, Smoking Damages and Dr. CNQ was saying about white people using the term white supremacy. Uh, well, one thing that they don't do is connect that with the word racism. They won't say racism, white supremacy. Now, they say racism or they'll say white supremacy. And usually they're connected with something else. It's, you know, racism and, 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 and. <laughs> you can add them up, you know, 
two or three things they'll add to it. Uh, white supremacy and this and this and that and that. Uh, but they stay away from connecting the two together because they have to do that. They have to do that to keep the illusion going that anybody can practice racism and anybody can be a white supremacist. So it's very important to keep those words, racism, white supremacy connected together. And you run your own counter racism science experiments and you'll see that for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for nothing. I said I was leaving about 15, 20 minutes ago. I'm still on the mic. You know, run your own experiments, do your own thinking, review your own data, make your own scientific conclusions. I'm off the mic. Well, um, I just want to thank everyone for participating, people for listening. Uh, and uh, I think this is a very constructive space. Um, I would like to definitely have some more um, on different topics and definitely uh, trying to bring out solutions to, you know, so we can be more constructive and stuff like that. Uh, plugging again, plugging in different uh, kind of racism uh, programs. Uh, yeah, producejustice.com by Mr. Fuller with Mr. Fuller every Tuesday at 9. Most of everybody here, I think, knows about that. So I don't know if I should be saying all this. But, yeah, 9 to uh, 11 Eastern Pacific time. I mean, Eastern time. I don't know if it's, no, Atlantic, I guess, whatever. But uh, you also have Just the Board. You have Dr. St. channel on YouTube. You have... um counterracism dot com, uh, CR's uh, website, and uh, I'm probably missing a couple of more. I apologize, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm, go I'm going to end this space. I thank everyone again, and uh, just you know, we all going to keep striving to continue the uh, counterracism. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good night.